What's going on guys? It's Gendo here and welcome to episode 50 of If I Had a Hammer. If you're still enjoying the series, of course, go and hit that like button. Now today, we got ourselves matches versus Newcastle and Manchester United, but of course before we get to that, we must go over how we've been faring in the league, as well as the Capital One Cup Final versus Manchester City and the FA Cup match versus Arsenal. Let's see how we did. Since our last live comment against Stuttgart, we did hit a couple of bumps and bruises along the way. Two out of our three losses happening in the cup competitions, which means we are out of the FA Cup as we lost to Arsenal by the score of 2-1. Arsenal jumping out to a 2-0 lead at halftime. Didn't help that Lucas Romero got sent off with a red card either, but Rui Pedro got one back, so prevent the clean sheet, but ultimately we're out of the FA Cup, as well as we did not win the Capital One Cup as Manchester City completely dominated us by the score of 3-1. Rui Pedro, of course, our goal scorer once again. However, it did not help that Manchester City came out with a storming three goals in the first half, which pretty much sealed off the victory for them. Oh well, didn't really expect the Silver War, didn't expect to go this far anyway, but, you know, it would have been nice to win something. But, let's take our attention to the league, where we have won four out of our last five matches, going all the way back up to the QPR in between the Stuttgart matches, which, if you saw in the last episode, if you had a very eagle eye, you would have noticed that we came away with the win. 2-1 versus QPR, Lindelof and Delaney coming away with goals in that match. Then we had to wait two more matches to get to our next match in the league, which was a 3-1 victory away from home against West Brom. Lucas Teodorch getting a brace here. Demi Pye adding to his tally and giving us the nice, comfortable 3-1 lead on the day. Then we jump over the Capital One Cup Final where we lost to Manchester City, but we were able to beat them in the return and we beat them quite unconvincingly by the score of 1-0. Rui Pedro, the goal scorer on this day in the second half. Hey, a win is a win. I'll take the three points however I get it. And then we followed that up with a nice solid 2-0 victory over Brentford. Rui Pedro continuing his goal scoring in these matches. He got himself a brace on the day, helped us out a lot. But then, unfortunately, we ended our streak by a very, a very strange 1-0 loss to Southampton. And Jose Perez gets the, the goal for the Saints. However, we did enough that we could have at least gotten ourselves a draw out of this, if not a win. We'll take it for what it is. Honestly, we'll just have to bounce back in these two matches. And we all know that Newcastle and Manchester United really dangerous in these later seasons because they know how to recruit well. And Manchester United is just good straight up anyway. So let's get into the match versus Newcastle. Newcastle coming at us with a 4-4-2 narrow diamond. I'm going to match narrow for narrow with the 4-2-3-1. This is how we're lining up. Dragovski and Nett, Chambers, Lindelof, Lucas, and Luke Shaw along the back line. Tielemans and Lucas Romero sitting in the center. Driussi, Mesut Ozil making his return. And Kyan Vandenbroek in that attacking mid spots. And then Lucas Teodorczyk sitting up front. Yes, over Giannis Delaney over Rui Pedro, but that's because Rui Pedro is injured. He'll be back, but after this live con, because it's a twisted ankle, he's going to be out for another couple of weeks. So we're going to have to rely on Lucas and Giannis Delaney in these next two matches. Hopefully they can grab us some goals, but let's kick off and see what happens in this match. Five minutes in, Newcastle threatening. Shaka gets it to Thorne to Luka Jovic, takes a shot, and Luka Jovic puts Newcastle in the lead very early on. It was some okay passing, but defensively, we needed to close these guys down better. Luka Jovic should not have that much space to get that shot off. It shouldn't have It shouldn't have happened. Ball coming forward once again. Newcastle getting the cross in. Mario Balotelli. Balotelli makes a two for Newcastle, and we are just in absolute shambles right now. I thought matching narrow for narrow would have done well, but they are bringing their wingbacks. They're bombing their wingbacks forward, crossing the ball and finds Balotelli, who's surrounded by two players, and none of them could defend him. Halftime, there needs to be a new mentality on this team. People looking uninterested, looking nervous. That's not how I want this team to look as we're sitting in fifth place in the table. We need to get a win if we want to get Champions League football and right now, we're not playing like we have that urgency. So second 45, there needs to be some change. 58 minutes gone now, and we have the ball. Pushing through. Lucas Teodorczyk takes a shot. There we go. We get one back. Lucas Teodorczyk going on the near side. And unfortunately, that's going to be the last thing he does before he gets subbed off. Giannis Delaney is going to take over for him. But that was some great passing movement in from Driussi to Lucas. Takes a touch, takes another touch, right peg, near side, goalkeeper. Should have done a lot better, to be quite honest with you, but I'll take the goal. 25 minutes to go now, ball coming up the wing, Driussi. 
he can just get past the defender, which he does, into Vandenbroek. Cutting inside. Where's he going to go with it? Jack Grealish lays it off to Giannis Delaney. And Giannis Delaney, in only his third game for the club, he gets his second goal. And it's the second goal of the game. And knots the match up at two apiece. We're right back in this. Now let's see if we can go grab a third. It was some great passing from Vandenbroek over to Grealish. One touches it to Delaney, who one touches it himself, beats the keeper at his near post, and it's all tied up. Ten minutes to go. We get the ball. Tielmans to Lucas Romero. Lucas Romero. Oh, my God. Pardon me. But it's 3-0 to West Ham. Lucas Romero with his first goal of the season. The ball just fell to him very nicely, who didn't take the best of shots. Admittedly, it was a pretty weak shot. But the goalkeeper just didn't have time to react. The ball goes through a sea of people. And West Ham have the lead for the first time all game. Let's see if we can hold down for the next 10 minutes. But with 15 seconds left to go in this match, Newcastle get the ball up to Luka Jovic. We need to stay solid defensively, and that's exactly what we should have done. Prevent the long ball over the top, and the ref should be blowing his whistle soon. We complete the comeback from 2-0 down. We win 3-2 over Newcastle United. That helps our chances a lot of getting into the Champions League for next season. So passionately, definitely, you've done brilliantly to come back. And that, with the match in hand over Arsenal, sees us now into fourth place. And we're level on points and level in matches played versus Manchester United. So next up, if we get a win, that will push us up into third place. We can only hope. But let's get into the match versus Manchester United now. All right, this is how we're going to line up versus Manchester United. They're coming out in a 4-4-2, and they said they were weak against teams that play through the middle, so that's exactly what we're going to do. 4-2-3-1, narrow, and this is how we're lining up. Mickey Vanderhart's coming in today for the goalkeeper duties. Chambers, Lindelhoff, Lucas Cresswell along the back line. Romero and Tielemann staying in that center mid role. Drew Ucy, Vandenbroek, and Grealish now coming in in the center attacking mids. And once again, Lucas Teodorczyk sitting up top. I'm going to give him another chance. I know Giannis Delaney got a goal in the last game. But let's see if Lucas can go and add one to his tally as well. So, cross fingers, we do well. We get up into third place. But let's kick off and see what happens. Early on, ball over the top, Wukas Teodorczyk on the outside of the box, being bullied. Cresswell on the ball inside to Kyan Vandenbroek to Wukas, takes a shot and just over the bar. Ball over the top, Memphis takes the shot and Memphis gets Manchester United up early. It was a great pass from Briel and Bolo, found Memphis, just beat his man, and he was the only one to get in front of goal. Defensively should have done a lot better. We're not playing with that high of a line, but Victor Lindelhoff definitely needed to not peel off away from the defender or away from the attacker if you wanted to have himself a chance. We need to start closing down more, and honestly, our defenders are not doing very well. Oh, come on! It's just exactly like how it was against uh, Newcastle. Our defense is complete and utter shit. Manchester United coming at us once again, 38 minutes now. Ball is being played through to Pai, to Briel, takes a shot, it's three. Oh my god. God. Nobody's playing well on defense today. They are just making us look like we're standing still. And Victor Lindelhoff is the worst offender. He has been beaten all three times. So you know what? Fuck it. Victor is being subbed off. Enzo Rocco is coming on for you. Victor Lindelhoff has been the main problem on all three of these goals. So he's getting subbed off. Nothing else to say except do better in the second half. At least get a goal so you don't get shut out. This has been an absolute shit show. 20 minutes to go now. We have the ball in a decent position. Delaney up to Dimitri Pai. Is he going to take a shot? I think he did, but it was tackled off, and we get ourselves a corner out of it. What can we do here? We have had seven shots. Not a single one has been on target. We need to change that. Teal Mullins into Romero. Takes a shot, but it's on the outside of the net. Vandenbroek slips it through to Giannis Delaney. He is kind of one-on-one -on -one the keeper. Does take the shot. Giannis Delaney off the bench once again. Getting a goal, it's 3-1 now to United, but that was our first shot on target. After 10 tries, this was our first one on target. Fortunately, it's in the back of the net, but where was this earlier? Ball out to Mbolo, 7 minutes from time. Lucas on him, just gets inside to Augustine, takes a shot. Oh, how did Mickey not save that? He had enough time to get there, but he just stopped. He froze in front of net, and it's 4-1 to United. I want to see this on 3D. How did he not make a dive? Augustine takes a shot. He dove in place. Could have done better. <laughs> it's the mantra of the day. Could have done better. 4-1 United. 
and I'm not happy with how anybody played out there. And Yuri and Jack Grealish look to switch off and are stressed. Well, that's what happens when you play like shit. So we do not take advantage of our match in hand over Arsenal and, of course, against Manchester United. So we don't see ourselves in the third place. We're in fourth, though. We're still in Champions League qualification, but we're just a point over City and three points over Arsenal with seven matches to go. Let's see how the final breakdown of the season is going to be. Let's take a look at who we're going to be facing in the next live com. So this is what the finale looks like. Our last seven games of the season all look like they have a chance to be winnable. Watford, Burnley, Swansea, Derby, Leicester, and then Stoke and Arsenal, which will be our live comm match. Of course, Arsenal, a difficult match on the last day of the season. But, like I said, the run-up looks like they can all be winnable matches, and that will help us immensely if we want to stay in Champions League contention. That also help me out if I want to keep some people on. Because, like, Yuri Tielemans, he wants Champions League football. Rui Pedro, Lucas Romero, all want Champions League football next season. So I really need to, if I want to appease them, I need to have some decent results going into the Stoke and Arsenal matches. So, that will be the next episode. So until that time, I'd like to thank you all very much for watching. If you liked what you saw, please go and hit that like button. It lets me know that you're still interested in the series. And of course, subscribe if you're new. Any comments, suggestions, questions, anything else at all, please leave in the comment box down below. But as always, this is Gendo, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and peace out.